Hello, hello. We're going to talk about an interesting company in this video. There are some very interesting points to talk about. This is going to be Antero Midstream Corp. And this is an oil and gas midstream company, as you are seeing here on the industry. And uh, it operates on the energy sector. Now, you will see, if you take a look at the five years chart, that this had a, a pretty much a massive decline. And then it has it starts having an up run over here, run over here. And um, this could continue. I mean, you could definitely see it continue right now, especially with uh, the current trend in the energy sector. And uh, in this uh, video, I wanted to talk about a few very, very important points that can help you evaluate all sorts of different companies, especially these types of companies, like for instance, energy companies, oil companies, and also help you with evaluating other types of companies that are paying dividends, for example, as this one is. So we're going to be using our stock evaluation tool, both our discounted cash flow model and the dividend discount model, which is also very interesting here, just to examine how you can use this one for companies of this uh, sort or if you can use it at all, frankly, we'll see. Now, it may be easy here to just see that the period of the company is 16 and the price to free cash flow is even better at 10 and be like, okay, this is cheap. This may be an interesting buy over here, maybe a great buy, a cheap buy. And this could be the case, but you need to, be, to remember a very, very important thing. We're talking about oil and gas over here, which is uh, especially cyclical. So it could go up in the next like two, three, four years, who knows. But these companies are very susceptible to even potential bankruptcies. Remember that. If you're forgetting, two years ago, many companies that were operating on the oil sector actually had uh, went default. They actually bankrupt. And so... It's uh, super important to make sure that you're buying companies that are solvent. You're buying companies that can potentially pay, your, uh, pay you the dividend for a long time, at least a decade, because typically they pay high dividends as well, these types of companies. And um, also you want to make sure that they are you know, solvent and producing uh, pretty much free cash flow. Very, very important. So we will examine all this here and see whether this uh, is actually a, a cool buy right here at um, pretty much at this at this level that it's sitting at right now at 11 bucks well it has been like 22 at some point as well and you will see in the max chart here um, takes you back a few more years that the company has had uh, um, you know it's um, it's up runs then going down then up very typical for again for cyclical companies of this sort and when a trend hump happens it tends to to uh, hit hard that's uh, a very very normal thing again with uh, energy sector now, an interesting point to notice here, you know, back in 2017, 2018, that's around these levels over here, when the company was starting going down pretty much, they were probably not making a lot of money and so they were issuing shares. That's what companies do when they are not um, making enough net income, obviously, when they're not making enough free cash flow, because they are paying, they have to pay, to pay back uh, some dividends, they have to be, make some, to be making some money. So if they are not making money, how are they going to be funding themselves other than uh, outstanding shares and basically issuing more shares to shareholders? This is why you're looking at this insane increase over here, which is obviously a very, very massive uh, red, uh, um, red sign here for uh, potential investors. Now, it gets normalized here. In the past few years, it hasn't been the same, mainly because the stock has been declining a lot. It didn't, probably wasn't making too much sense to, to issue more shares. But this probably means that the company got some extra debt because there's two ways to actually finance yourself if you're not making money right you either issue shares or you get debt so since they were not issuing shares they either had enough money in their coffers or basically just got debt we will examine that now the, as you'll see here the total ability to free cash flow is starting to get a little bit out of hand not too much it's about six years of last year's free cash flow to pay back the total liabilities but maybe last year was the odd one out because remember this is a company that wasn't doing as well in the previous years all these things deserve examination of course now the five-year revenue growth is still up but it used to be near zero as you'll see and the net income is going up and down as again expected in, in the previous years where, you know, a lot of companies went uh, bust, it actually was losing money, but not that much, uh, which is um, interesting. It was losing some, but not that much. But it's not making that much either. So it's uh, it's still getting to positive territory, though, and that's nice to see. And the five-year free cash flow is still uh, pretty much growing over here with a total equity growth more than likely due to uh, pretty much uh, shares being printed. And the margins of the company are rather high when they are positive, is another thing. Again, that's something to be expected for this kind of industry. Now, interesting point here, the dividend yield of the company is sitting at 8%, that's very high. 
And at some point it was even higher, as you'll see. But the payout ratio in terms of its free cash flow, it's 82%. That's very high. And the payout ratio compared to uh, factored for the net income is actually even higher, at 133% right now. So this is, uh, again, a massive red flag here, which we need to examine in a little bit more detail. Now, I kind of want, before we go, before we jump to our stock evaluation tools, I want to take a look at the income statement in which you will see that the revenue has been growing and so the net income has been, you know, going from positive to negative. Again, we had a couple of years that were bad for oil and gas, and so now it's getting the reversal. It's, uh, things are doing much, much better. It's probably one of their better years uh, since a while now for all these kinds of companies. Now, in terms of their balance sheet, you will see a lot of additional paid-in capital because the company has been issuing stock, especially this, these two years where things were bad for the company. They should, uh, as, as much as possible, I suppose, and uh, they got uh, funded by that. And still, their equity growth, the total equity growth has been um, uh, pretty much not uh, tremendous because they were losing money, even though they were printing shares. And this is why it's, 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 you know, it's much more, more than what it used to be five years ago because of the extra printing of shares because of uh, the, the value that we saw earlier, the additional paid in capital. Yet it's still going down, like 3.1, 2.4, 2.2. So they are depleting of their reserves. That's not nice to see, of course. Now, in terms of the cash flow statement, whoops, I clicked the wrong one. In terms of the cash flow statement, you will see that after the adjustments, we're getting about 700 million, and uh, the same thing was happening in the previous years. So, um, Eventually, when we get down to the free cash flow, you're looking at um, 28, 83, 20, 235, 56, 523 for the past year, pretty much. That's, uh, that has happened in the past couple of years or so. Now, they're paying, as you'll see, 471 million in uh, dividends, and last year was 590, which already tells us, uh, tell us uh, that uh, they have actually cut down on their dividends. That's also a no, not a great sign because this means that the stock will go down. It will have implications for investors that are going to be abandoning the stock and things of that sort. The price will go down. And so, as we're seeing this, the next thing to do is we go to our stock analysis page here, uh, menu, I should say, and we select dividends just to take a little bit of a look at how dividends have been doing. Take a look at this one. There has been a, ma a massive increase lately, and then the things are going down again. So this is one that is obviously not steady, and you cannot expect this uh, type of steady stocks from uh, oil and gas companies for the most part. There are some uh, huge, some giant ones like Exxon, for example, which can support that. But a company of this sort, uh, of this size, cannot really support everlasting dividends um, is the thing. Now, they are currently sitting at an 8.0x, 8% pretty much uh, dividend yield based on the on the, price, the stock price to, of today, yeah, that is, uh, that's the dividend yield of today. And uh, this is obviously very lucrative, 8% is quite a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our dividend discount uh, Gordon Gordon growth model pretty much, which will tell us whether our assumptions for a steady growth uh, company here in terms of its dividends uh, make any sense for buying the company. Now, it's important to understand and see here the annual dividends of the company. This hundred table over here tells you what the company has been paying. So 45 cents, 108, 123, 098, 090. So it's going up and down a lot and had a massive increase here, which basically really, really affects the average dividend growth rate that takes it up to 31% because of all these values. However, as you'll see, it's only this year where it was uh, pretty much uh, very high. And then this was also pretty high, but then it went uh, down to negative territory. Something to be expected, again, for a company of this sort, this is not a steady growth company. It's not like, for example, let's just say Coca-Cola. Let's take a quick look, for instance. Like if you use Coca-Cola here, you will see that this is much steadier, like 2%, 2.5, 2.4, 4.7. .4, very, very steady here. And again, if you take a look at uh, um, the dividends uh, tab for Coca-Cola, again, you will see the steadiness over here. So this is a great, great company to be using a, a model of this sort. It's very predictable. But if we go back to our Antero Midstream over here, whoops, Antero Midstream Corporation is what we were examining. Again, you will see that their dividends were irregular. And so if we, if we want to use this dividend discount uh, model, we're likely going to be off by a lot because we cannot really predict what the company is going to be doing is the thing. And nobody can, frankly. However, what we can do is get a sense of what could could potentially happen if we give it a dividend growth that makes sense. This Remember, this is a perpetual dividend growth. So if we go like 1% and then 1.5% and let's say 
it even may be optimistic because again this is the uh, pretty much the perpetual one this is going to be happening through the ages and so the annual return that we expect to make for a company of this sort um, let's just say it's like eight percent over here and if we hit calculate let's see what we're getting now if we do that we're getting values that are very close to the current price and actually even green they're actually even um, uh, pretty much max price to, to pay for today is like 13 bucks we're currently sitting at 11.21 for example that's the low one but again, remember these kinds of projections here could be off because we don't know what the company is going to be doing. It's still nice to know if the company grows at this rate, it does make sense uh, to pay to pay for it today if we're expecting to make about 8%. So it's, it does pay to know that. Now, of course, we want to be using our discounted cash flow model as well. Uh, we want to be trying both models just to see what we're getting here if we actually adjust for the free cash flow instead of the dividends that are actually getting paid. And also remember that there is also ex important risk here for the dividends, right? I mean, that's something that I, I didn't um, explicitly mention, but I did kind of mention it when we were taking a look at the payouts. Because remember, the payouts were, were very high here. And also remember, the debt-to-equity ratio of the company has been climbing, meaning that they are getting more debt, is what I was telling you in the beginning of the video. So all these things have to be factor, bec factored, because they increase the risk of this company. Very, very important to bear that in mind. So this, this is already adding some extra risk here. So now let's go back to our stock evaluation tool and just quickly do the discounted cash flow model and see what we're getting here. Now, the revenue growth of the company all over the place, again, it's going up, it's going down. I was looking at analyst estimates, which are projecting something like 3 to 5%. I'm going to go th 2, 3, and 4 here. And the net income margins of the company, again, they are a little bit all over the place, uh, uh, up and down a lot. Very, very tough to, to give it a number. Last year, they did 34%. It looks like these kinds of years, they could be positive for them. So I'm going to go... Uh, the for the next five years, potentially. Let's just go 28, 30, and 32. Again, it's going to be tough to project these kinds of companies because they're up and down a lot, very, very cyclical. But we cannot do, at least try to do our best here based on the data that we're having. And remember, these kinds of companies get a boost uh, from uh, when uh, the industry is actually up uh, as a whole, which does happen right now with energy, with the energy sector. It's getting more expensive. So you could potentially see them do well for maybe a few years. But this is probably not a company to be holding for the long run. Now, let's just go for the free, for the free cash flow margins. Uh, let's just go 90, 100, 110. It's probably going to be a little bit elevated. And um, an annual return of 13%, uh, the typical one that I ask for the companies that I uh, analyze. Now, you will see that the low value that we're getting for these estimates is uh, $7.00. 9 for the medium and 11 for the high, which is already there. And so this could be a potential buy right now if you are expecting it to do these kinds of numbers here, which are possible for the next five years. Now, would I be buying this one? I think it's risky. I think there is quite some risk here. And I do think that the company will eventually have to uh, pretty much bring down the dividends even more because their payout ratios are very high. So I don't, I don't see how they will continue serving this kind of uh, payout uh, ratios here, this kind of dividend uh, with the current money that they are making, unless you know their operations uh, really, really uh, do much better than what they are doing right now. So, yeah, this is a company that I think I would probably stay, stay away from. But, uh, you know, it, it's not like terrible. Like you could see somebody making some money here. It does have some risk. Maybe you, you can buy it and just pocket the dividends for a while. But I wanted to make this video and just give you the overall picture and uh, basically you can use this use this uh, analysis as a guide for other companies just uh, to give you an idea of how you should be approaching these kinds of companies uh, for your analysis. And then obviously it's your decision, but uh, obviously with our tool here, you can do all these kinds of analysis uh, fairly nicely and very quickly. And of course, if you enjoy this kind of analysis, if you you know you want to make your the best investments possible, you can uh, at any point uh, pretty much join our Patreon and uh, gain uh, full access to this one. All the links are in the description box below this video. And I thank you for watching this one. And uh, in the meantime, take a look at this video that I pretty much uh, made uh, a few hours ago. It's about Alibaba and what is happening right there. A very, very interesting company that's up for almost like 80% in the past uh, couple of months or so. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.